This Boeing 727 thinks it's a fighter jet trying to do a high performance takeoff maneuver. You can see it has a very low gear retraction, basically trying to fly in ground effect, but this can be very dangerous as the aircraft can sink back down into the runway. It's not something I would see an airliner perform typically, but given the name on the side of the aircraft, I'm not entirely surprised. This is the absolute wrong way to get out of a helicopter. See these people walking out to the front? That's the right way to do it. Look at this guy on the right-hand side walking around the back. What a terrible decision. He almost gets clipped by this tail rotor, and the pilot can't believe it either. He's looking out of his right-hand side, hoping that this guy shows up that he's not dead. Did you know 92% of planes ditching in water had less than one minute warning? However, your odds of surviving ditching are still around 90%. The most important thing isn't how good the pilot is, how fast the plane sinks, or if you retract the landing gear. What you really care about is the water temperature. If the water is 60 degrees, you can survive about seven hours, but if it's 50 degrees, then you only have two and a half hours to live. That's why you don't want to ditch in the middle of the ocean in the winter. Check out what this pilot does at this air show. So he's coming in for landing. He's probably trying to show off for the crowd, or maybe he's got some friends there, but he's trying to land as close to the end of the runway as possible, which is just a really bad decision because it leaves very little margin for error. Here he comes, there's the road. He actually bounces off of the road before he touches down on the runway. Definitely not something you wanna do as a pilot. Pay attention to when the wheel hits the ground. A passenger filmed this when they were flying on a Dash 8 airplane, which gives you a unique view of the landing gear. Now the tire blew on takeoff and the crew had to turn around for an emergency landing. It's kind of hard to see because of the speed, but that smoke from the wheel is because the airplane tires actually drag on the runway until they speed up to match the speed of the plane. And that means every tire leaves about a pound of rubber on the runway with each landing, which can be over 10,000 pounds a day at some of the busiest airports. Check out how the tread is just shredding off the tire and watch what happens when it gets really slow here. Now airplane tires are actually filled with nitrogen instead of air. They're inflated to around 200 psi and rated to at least 200 miles per hour, typically good for about 200 to 500 landings. Now all those layers of tread mean the tire can be retread about seven times and although blowouts can happen, it's usually due to underinflation and they're extremely rare. This is how you lose your license as a pilot. Check out what happens when he hits the water. Obviously flying at a very steep angle of bank at a low altitude, it's gonna put you at risk for hitting the water. Look how steep he is and look how close those rotor blades are to hitting the water there. You know, he's flying lower and lower. I don't know if he's trying to perform a stunt or maybe just show off for the guy filming on the boat or what's going on, but watch him as he turns around this corner here. He gets really low and that's the point right there where he hits the water does some really good damage to the rotor blades. Fortunately, no one was injured. The passengers are bracing for impact because the nose gear is stuck sideways, and this is not something that you typically see happen. And the first thing the pilots do is slow the airplane down to the final approach speed, and they fly this just like any other approach. But they have to be very careful about trying to hold the nose wheel off the ground too long because the plane could get too slow, and then it would slam down and break off. And the real danger is figuring out how to stop the plane because they won't be able to use the thrust reversers or the spoilers to slow down and they aren't supposed to use the brakes because they don't want that deceleration to create more force on the nose gear, which could cause it to collapse. So instead they actually shut down the engines right after they touch down, and they're hoping that they actually have enough runway because you can see the distance markers going by the plane, indicating that they're running out of room, but thankfully they picked the longest runway. Crash or low pass? These are actually some of the lowest passes I can find, and this guy gets pretty lucky that his wingtip didn't clip the ground. Now this next one, you've probably seen clips from this beach before. You definitely don't want to land too short or you're probably going to ruin somebody's day. If you're going to do something illegal, you might as well get views from both inside and outside of the cockpit. And remember that big planes, they can fly low too, but I still like the sound of the guy on the bottom better than the one on the top. Now, if you're ever going to do some sort of low pass or whatever, you definitely want to be a controlled environment like they are. They're definitely doing some sort of test flight, but the real low pass winner goes to this guy. This is a student pilot and her engine just quit. Now watch what the instructor does next. Stomach County traffic, 121 uniform Chevrolet, mayday, 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 mayday. We're going to be landing on runway four. We're losing engine power. That split second decision could mean the difference between life and death. They're only a few hundred feet above the ground and listen to his next radio call. Stomach County traffic, 121 uniform Chevrolet is going to be landing on runway four. We're turning final runway four. Come on. Stomach traffic, 176 Mike Echo, breaking off the pattern. Runway's clear. The most important thing to remember in any aircraft emergency is to aviate, navigate, and communicate. And it took the instructor just seven seconds to do all three. Now he takes the controls to keep the plane flying. He has no time to troubleshoot or to restart the engine. So he turns the plane around to land in the opposite direction they took off from. And he makes a radio call letting everyone know what they're doing and another plane moves out of the way. In less than 60 seconds, they were able to safely land the plane. Nice. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Size does matter. This Boeing 747 aircraft is taken off from runway 17 in Minneapolis, and you can see the power that these motors have. The runway is only 150 feet wide. Look at that number four engine on the right hand side as it's kicking up some new freshly laid sod on the side of the runway, really tearing things up. The pilots didn't do anything wrong, but it shows you how powerful the motors can be. These passengers have no idea what's about to happen. Check out the markings on the runway. The set of markers going by right now are the aim point markers are typically about a thousand feet from the threshold of the runway. You should be landing close to those or just beyond. This plane is just now touching down several seconds beyond that. So he's far down the runway. You've got a wet runway. It's really going to make it very challenging to stop. You can see the thrust reverser is going to start to come into action here on that left wing. You're going to see it pulling some of that water vapor, that moisture off of the runway as the pilot is undoubtedly applying maximum braking while applying maximum thrust reversers and basically they're running out of runway you can see the markings on the ground coming by indicating they're getting closer to the end of the runway guess what there's the end and he just isn't able to stop it in time and off they go into the grass